Hey there guys, welcome back to another episode of Monster Super League. It's your boy Odin, and today I'm going to be doing a Dark Indra showcase. I'm going to go ahead and go through this very, very quickly, uh, because I realized that the reset is about to uh, occur in about <laughs> 20 seconds. But luckily we don't need that long to uh, showcase our boy Dark Indra here, who obviously with this team you're going to basically one-shot the Colossus. So we're going to go ahead and go on a world tour of all the difficult content. I'm going to go ahead and basically show you guys where he's really good at, um, where he uh, can be very, very um, overpowered. And then also, of course, uh, going to go ahead and show off him in the arena. So this is going to be a very, very long video, in my opinion. So I'm going to go ahead and basically go back now that we've completed uh, the um, Colossus just in time for that reset. We're going to go ahead and pick up our packages there let me go ahead and see where my boy dark indra is i know some of you guys have definitely uh been wanting have been waiting for his primo festival for a very very long time now the only thing i can say is i don't foresee a primo festival for dark indra in the near future um and that is because he is still to this day the mo the best you know character or astromon in monster super league so um the, if you are waiting for him uh, good luck. Probably keep waiting. I don't know if they're ever going to make him a character that you can uh, essentially get from the Primo Festival. Um, if they do, I would think that Monster Super League is probably approaching its uh, last days of active uh, gameplay. But So Dark Indra, he is an attacker. He is a double courageous striker. So you know he's going to be hitting really, really hard. Um, from the stats base here, guys, I'm going to show you guys my gem set for him. Um, I am using attack attack crit damage. This is his first gem. So um, I got really lucky on some of these rolls and ended up getting some really good stats. Uh, this one here ended up getting two rolls into attack and then obviously the rest into crit rate. That's kind of how you want to try to pull some of your courageous strikers or build them is you really want to go for that crit rate while maximizing the crit damage. Um, of course, Dark Indra being a Dark Mon, he's gonna have some pretty high amount of uh, bonus crit damage. Um, and I'll show you guys his total crit damage here in a second, but this is the last gem here, which is attack, 27.5 uh, crit rate, which is pretty good in my opinion. I mean, if you can get like, you know, 32 or 30, you're like already rocking a God level of crit rate, but obviously there's people out there that have better jumps than that. Um, mine is of course fully skill booked so he is five out of five he also is a level six variant leader skill um, i ended up pulling a water indra with that le level skill when he first came out or, or when i first started playing i should say and uh yeah i fed him straight to him so um yeah obviously he's using the arthur's trinkets uh you only really need two to activate the 10 percent attack uh, bonus set that the Arthur Trinket set gives you um, but I figured you know what I'm gonna go ahead and just give him all three because it'll boost up his stats but just a little bit you know um, so yeah but in total my Dark Indra is rocking 12,700 attack uh, defense is 5,500 almost 5,600 HP is 56,500 and recovery is uh, who cares about recovery <laughs> um, but yeah so that is his stats right now um, I obviously think that I could probably do, so I have tried triple attack. Triple attack is, is really, really good. It's very much the same amount of damage as I would do with attack attack crit damage, actually. Um, the only thing that's going to make Indra here really, the, the biggest difference is going to be in the ascension skill. Um, mine ended up getting shield the first time that I did it. Dark Indra was the first mon that I ever did a super ascension skill for. I ended up getting shield, which in my opinion at the time was like, okay, it's pretty good. I'll keep it, keep it for now. I'll probably redo it eventually in the future. Um, and then I realized that it takes like a month to get a hundred uh, dim dimensional st super stones. So I've just been sitting on re-rolling my dark engine for a while now, but his best, um, you know, ascension skill is going to be devastating strikes. If you get devastating strikes, it's an extra 25% chance to crit for critical hit damage and on a triple attack with that bonus uh with him being a dark type he is just going to be completely broken um if you look at my crit damage right now i'm at 264 percent crit damage 
Uh, imagine that being, you know, um, I want to say it was like 225 crit damage plus that dev, dev strikes. He that's how much damage, how much he would be rocking there, close to 250 um, crit damage or so. I think it's the, the total 240 or 250 is what he should be sitting at with dev strikes, but on a triple attack like set. So that would push his damage like much, much higher if he was on triple attack with dub strikes uh, going up against the light titan. So um, the resist doesn't matter on this one because he is being used in the back lane. So don't care much about the resistance. The crit resist, of course, obviously comes in handy against the um, light titan. Uh, but it's not, you know, 100% needed. You can basically just settle with that 20% chance. Uh, or 20% uh, crit resistance is pretty good in my opinion. So, um, so yeah, uh, I definitely love the Dark Indra. Uh, he's very, very good. Um, I think that he's definitely my favorite um, Astromon in the game. Um, and I do use him quite often. Um, but I will say that he has been getting a run for his money uh, from the very old, lovely uh, Dark Persephone. If you don't have a Dark Persephone, um <laughs> tough to explain but um if you don't have a dark persephone you're messing out <laughs> uh she is just so so good she hits so hard if you put her on a siphon set the way that i have here on triple or attack attack crit damage or triple attack um and you get a, a broken super ascension skill like um uh buff break here or full buff break here uh, she's so good uh, every time I use her in arenas and you guys will see that here when I showcase her in the arenas as well along with Dark Indra uh, It's just a very very powerful combination. So all right, so enough of me talking Let's go ahead and go uh, to do some of the actual hard content here um, I think today should be the dark uh, Dimensional dungeon. Yeah, that's fine. So we will go ahead and do that as well um, And then I do have some uh, dra drag drag dragon dungeon sigils or dragon sigils so we can do some of that as well but let's go ahead and start off with some of the um champions league here uh this is the special week so we're all gonna get active week uh we're gonna be able to do uh his um active skill right off the bat let's make sure we turn on our damage count here on the left and here we go so um, my teams, as you guys will see, that I use for Champions League, uh, for the attacking team, I should say, it's very damage output like wise. So there's the first active skill hit. It was for 170,000 on all of them. Um, what I do is I usually kill one or two of my opponents, drain the uh, siphon or siphon SP siphon, you know, one of the others, and then I wait for the my next turn. And this is usually how it goes. Of course there he is getting stun locked on the first turn which kind of eh, did not want that to happen but it is what it is let's go ahead and basically just do some zap because i don't think the mona here is gonna do too much there we go and then this should also kill uh this turn here so let's go ahead and see if i can uh, make sure that i actually don't just die there all right so that perfect sap if you don't know still a very very powerful tool all right, and here's Dark Persephone with her 333,000 just, you know, casually making herself, uh, you know, available. <laughs> um, I will say that, you know, I did get really, really lucky with that Ascension skill. It's definitely more PvP based, um, but it is very, very much usable in a lot of the hard content um, uh, in the game. Um, Especially in like the Dark Tower helped me out quite a bit actually in the Dark Tower too and some uh, stages that had some shields, etc. Uh, I did do some Dark Tower videos or guides for you guys though. Uh, so go ahead and check that out as well. Um, I do have playlists. I feel like some people just don't understand or don't know or don't search for them. But guys, I have like playlists set on my channel. So just, you know, go to my main channel, go to playlists and you guys should be able to see Titans uh, all the Titans stuff is in the Titans uh, playlist. You know, all the um, Apophis stuff is in the Apophis playlist. So, you know, if you're looking for Astrogen's guides, they're all going to be in the MSL guides. So make sure you guys actually get in there and look before, you know, spamming my inbox or spamming my Discord with, hey, do you have a guide for this? And I always have to answer with, yes, there is a guide. Just look for it. <laughs> 
and and i'm not saying you can't like you know just reach out to me but feel free to do so um like i said there is the discord channel for that reason you know so that you know if anybody needs assistance or help with with the game you know because we are here to basically grow the community like i do want people to play msr this was a pretty fun game um with latesia basically around the corner um i think that you know monster super league still has a lot to go um just because of the fact that when latesia does launch um, it may just be getting launched in korea first um, and just the way that, you know, the game is working right now or the design, I think that it's probably going to be released in 2024. Um, just by the amount of the development that, you know, is really um, involved in that uh, or the amount of effort that is really involved in that to get a game like that up and running. I'm going to say that it's probably, you know, they probably did a premature announcement of it. Um, that's probably why we haven't seen too, too much. But I would guarantee you guys that it's going to be releasing in 2024. If it does release in 2023, it may release, you know, at the end of this year in Korea only. And then again, kind of like the same way that Monster Super League released globally a couple of months afterwards. So it may be that case. So, so that still basically gives me the, the, a lot of hope that people should still and will still be playing Monster Super League into 2024 and possibly longer. Again, really, the game has quite a few different, like, um works about it um, just because it's very very free to play pl friendly i mean you can like argue to say that like oh i don't have enough astro gems you know for primo festival for the clan festival and for the heroes festival but it's like you know two years or a year ago we didn't we couldn't even do any of that because you know they really restricted a lot of the astro gem farming but they didn't take it away if, if you look at other games they would have taken that like that free to play feature out like within the first two weeks monster super league left it running for about six years um or five years i should say but anyways uh back to the main topic there is, there are guides in the uh discord channel so make sure you guys go in there and check them out um i'm just casually playing here and chatting up a storm with you guys but um i love indra indra is so so good um let's go ahead and get back to the main focus here and discuss him and what he can do uh so him being a double courageous striker obviously against these dark defensers or dark aggressors he's not going to deal like insane amounts of damage um but if you're going up against like somebody that's a uh hp aggressor uh somebody like the light john or Gianna, as some people call her, um, or even just uh, somebody like the Light Shiva, um, he's gonna deal much, much higher damage than he would uh, some of these other uh, teams that we're going up against, just because, again, really, uh, he's a health-driven uh, nuker, not uh, a, you know, any other stat nuker, so. As you guys saw that, he basically didn't do a lot against that Kraken or Sea Star, whatever you wanna call her. Um, but um, yeah, so that's pretty much how his, his skit really works is, you know, he is a, a courageous striker. So he's going to work mainly against HP aggressors. So like if I had him here in the back, that would have been a really, really good move. And I, am, I probably should have looked into that. But as you guys can see, Dark Persephone there still showing off. Uh, completely, completely broken in my opinion. Uh, she's so, so good. Um, all right, so it looks like we might actually die here, but there is that active skill functioning like I planned it, right? Um, really, really good. Hopefully we stun the jump. No, she didn't. All right, well, she's got on dying volition, so she's not going to die just yet. Um, and that should allow me to live at least one more turn, enough for me to get this off and to kill the Arthur. So perfect. Uh, so I think we've done, what, three battles? No, four battles, I think. So we did, yeah, the last three and then this one. Um, so it still leaves me six tickets. Uh, let me see if I can do... And just so you guys know, what I do is I'll, like, do, like, ten fights a day during the uh, active week. And that usually puts me pretty, pretty far up. I mean, granted, I don't really ever lose my attacking battles. It's usually the defensive uh, battles that I'll use, like, one or lose one, one or two here and there. Here's my defense part if you're really interested. Um, I have a pretty decent amount of stacked mons. And again, all of these guys here are super ascended. Uh, I chose to super ascend new mons instead of going back to uh, redo uh, my Indra's just because, you know, 
you don't want to waste a hundred um, of those dimension stones. You know, it's it's really it takes a month to get one super ascension skill. So um, I'm definitely not whirling out of any of those ascension skills, guys. Like it's an added added like five percent bonus to stats. Like the visual aspect of the um, evolution is like definitely something I I like and I'd want. Um, and the uh, super ascension is really nothing more than just like a little bit of a boost in stats um, and an extra skill. Um, so to me, in my opinion, it's not something that you need to like wail out for. Um, you know, mons are perfectly viable the way that they are now in the game. Uh, so don't, you know, cheat yourself um, out of your own hard earned cash. Uh, and think that you know you're gonna get a massive increase in damage and all that or a massive new skill um, by performing a super sensitive skill so it's not it's not worth it it's what I guess what is what I'm saying um, but that being said <laughs> buff breaker <laughs> buff breaker is is so so good and I'm gonna show you guys but I did actually end up getting a buff breaker uh, again on my uh, Dark Odin, which I was like super super happy about because as you know Dark Odin is a SP and HP goddess like she just regenerates 25% HP um, And SP on hit so she's just like spamming defense down spamming that it, With the buff breaker. She's she's so good. I probably should do a whole showcase of the Dark Odin right now uh, Just because she is so good all right, I'm going to go ahead and go into the next one here. Uh, let's go ahead and go against this team. Again, really active week. Uh, kind of cheat mode for a lot of uh, this content here. But I did want to bring the Indra in here. Because you guys can see like his damage, his top damage. What it would be like uh, when you're going up against these other teams in Arena. So there was a 260,000 hit right there. So really, really good amount of damage. I mean, like on a good day, a Dark Mona is doing like 150, 160, you know, versus this Dark Andra here pulling double digits on top of what Mona would do. So, and you guys can see there, there's my Dark Mona. She's at 43,000. Granted, she's sealed right now, um, but there, only 72,000. And then the, that Dark Mona is on uh, attack, attack, crit damage as well. So she's super, super hitting hard. Um, but yeah, so uh, Dark Indra, here's the Dark Persephone. Um, I have done like one or two videos on the Dark Indra and Dark Persephone teams in Arena before, um, but I think I've only done it with both of them together and I'll do it again in this uh, video so that you guys can see how they work together and how good they are together. It's literally like they were meant for each other. <laughs> uh -huh. um, but yeah, so Challengers week for me, not very difficult. Uh, pretty good content. Uh, Love the uh, Astro Gems. Uh, have we talked about the Astro Gems? Uh, yeah, I can usually get up to 1500 right away. Like, um, I think my highest that I have ever gotten was the seventh place. Uh, so it's 2100 gems if you finish second to 10th, and that was a very nice week for me. Um, again, that's another way that I get like a lot of my gems back is just by pocketing it in the arena rewards every single week both arena and challengers arena all right so after this one we'll do this last battle and then we'll also do the random and then we'll go to arenas and then we'll do the dimension defense dungeon um and then we will try out uh maybe the dragon columns or, or dragons and then a dimension golems one real quick too all right Oof, that, that dark purse there is tanky. I might die here. Oh, so close. Yeah, she, she was real tanky. I'm not going to lie. I was actually like, oof, I thought I was dead. So Indra survived there, which was very nice. Um, let's see. What can we do here? Um, I don't want to... Here's the thing about Dark Valkyrie. Al Valkyrie is so annoying. Ah, uh, there we go. That, I got really lucky there with this done. That uh, Water Shahara side is on a few so. Um, yeah, Dark Valk, in my opinion, really the starters, all the starters, they are very, very good. So when you pick them out, like in the beginning, you know, if you're trying to decide which 
um, you know, a contract here I'm on to pick up, like right now, I would say that because they all have, like in the beginning, I would have said Light Arthur 100% of the time. Very good pick. Like that should be your first and only Light uh, pick. But with uh, Odin's uh, Super Evolution, um, her being an HP aggressor, she's really good as well. Um, you know, and the fact that she heals herself and allies too is very, very good. Um, if you end up getting, um, what's that skill? Um, my dark, my light griffin, I should say, has it here. It's, um, it's really, really good. It basically lets you heal like 40% of your HP on hit. Um, let me go ahead and see how much damage we deal with. 336,000 damage. So that's really good. And now we're going up against Light John, who is an HP aggressor. So let's see how much damage Indra will do now. And I'm very interested to see how much she'll do from 336,000 on a regular three star hit. 450,000. It's almost like 100,000 a hit on uh, that Light John. So she's probably sitting close to like 120, 130,000 HP. Probably a little bit more. She may have been in an HP defense, defense uh, jump set. Uh, or HP, HP defense, I should have said. Um, there's that beautiful buff break going off right there from the uh, Persephone. Gosh, it's just so good, man. I, I honestly can, like, I have zero complaints about the Persephone's. Uh, the light one is really well designed. The dark one is really well designed. The fire one is really well designed. Like, heck, the water one is still completely broken. Um, really good mods lately, I think, uh, with the Super Evos. Um, but, and they've been making them a lot more available as well, uh, which is very, very nice. All right, so we've got, what, 900? So we're going to to Masters Tier 1. Let's fight 900 gems. All right, so we're all done with the Champions League. You guys kind of get a gist of how much damage he gets from there. Let's go ahead and do a couple of these ones. There's an HP aggression team. It is active week in the arena as well. So we're going to go ahead and uh, show some of his damage. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll get some good amount of numbers here. Look at that, 389. Oh man, this uh, this light Odin is gonna be a pain, um, just because she has that uh, super ascension skill, um, which I keep forgetting the name of. Oh man, I knew it. I knew she was gonna be a pain. Unwavering resolve. That's what it is. And if I don't kill this person now, I was going to die. Oh, I might have to do this battle here unless somehow this light uh, Yuki is able to uh, come back from the grave here. Of course, no crit because that light uh, Odin is completely buffed out, man. I got to say, she is uh, she's rocking today. I'm, I might die here. Here's the thing though, my uh, Light Griffin also has uh, Unwavering Resolve, so this, um, hoping that, oh, I, oh my god, and the shield. Now you guys see the true value of a Light Odin, just like I was just talking about her literally five minutes ago or three minutes ago, now you guys get to see her in actual work here. Um, I'm hoping that my Light Griffin um, is able to use the um oh, what do you call it the um fever mode to get a little bit of damage going but this is gonna be like forever i almost feel like i should just draw and see if i get another attempt in because um that, that that's how powerful this skill is you know uh she is recovering health every time she gets hit she's recovering health every time she does a hit and every time she does her you know uh, five star skills she's just like dishing out damage so as you guys can see this could literally go on for at least another like five more minutes at which point my light griffin is gonna probably die this next turn um and we'll go ahead and do so just because like I, you know this this guy whoever this guy is nah he don't deserve to win i'm gonna go ahead and hit the draw <laughs> uh, but yeah very very good team i'm definitely gonna give it a try again but as you guys can see there you know if you picked the light odin and you ended up getting something stupid like that unwavering resolve skill uh you guys can see that the the ultimate power of that light odin right there so um i'm gonna try to at least kill one of these hp aggressors because 
if I don't, oh, and I probably should have waited actually, because I'm going to die now. Yep, GG. Ah, uh, that was a very, very bad move. And just so you guys know, like, I am going to lose this time, for sure. Um, yeah, and the minute that, uh, <laughs> I forgot that this is active week, <laughs> I knew I was going to lose. But as you guys can see, Unwavering Resolve, man, it's just such a stupid, broken skill. Um, and my Light Griffin is actually pretty well decked out as well. Uh, so he could live out for at least a couple more turns here, but um, I'm just going to end it if this doesn't end before the time turn. I wish there was like a give up now button. I think there is one actually. Yeah, there is a give up button. Well, let's just let's just go. Let's just see how long Griffin lives. Will he make it to the top turn? I don't know. Um, but as you guys can see, Unwavering Resolve, uh, one of the best super ascension skills you can get on an arena. Um, I guess it's quite useful in uh, Titans as well still, like if you get it on like a woodman lane or a light front lane, um, front lane, uh, oh damn it, I was going to lose this battle, I should have lost, it's all good, it's just some points, whatever, um, you can, um, you can do all kinds of, uh, you know, good setups with that unwavering resolve, um, you know, you could actually use it on something like a wave clearer as well, um, like that way you ensure like you know that way clear just doesn't die Man, these things are stacked today. What is with this? We got a dark acer here. She's gonna do some nice damage to me uh, let's See hopefully I can manage to rough break that. Nope All right, Now I need to shock her, but I don't want to kill her um, Darn this is gonna be painful here. I need to be able to survive one hit here. All right, here we go. Let's see if we can get it. There we go. Buff break winning. And uh, looks like we were able to finish out this one with a win at least. Because, oof, I was getting kind of worried though. I kind of still do want to go back into that um, HP aggressor battle just to try and see if I could beat him still. Um, but maybe later, maybe another time. I'm sure I'll run into him again. Level 61, whoever you are, uh, Korean dude. Uh, congrats, you you got a pretty decked out uh, Light Odin, and uh, yeah, very, very good team setup. All right, this will be the last arena battle for uh, this team here. Um, as you guys can see, though, you know, Indra is still a pretty good mon uh, for arenas, even if you, um, you know, weren't sure if you could use him in arenas, now you should be able to see that. Um, with him having the shield skill as well, there you go. He can survive a decent amount of hits. Um, and uh, I guess, uh, again, really not a bad skill to have if, if that's what you end up getting. Uh, especially on a Courageous Striker, because it can help you live out an extra turn, you know. And, and even though you may not have max damage uh, as you would, you know, with Depth Strikes, it is a pretty good um, skill to have. All right, so let's go ahead and go into the Dimensional uh, Golem Dungeon. And we'll do the light one and it's uh, yeah i may as well just do it with this team um and i think i can auto it so let's go ahead and just auto it um just this one i mean you know i'm not really trying to show off but like really dark indra is that good that you can just auto bottle pretty much anything i mean plus there he is so 130,000 damage already top of the line right there uh when compared to um, everyone else of course persephone the, the minute that she does her um full a her active skill she is going to be beating indra uh, but if you were to bring dark persephone into you know titans she's definitely not going to be beating beating indra that's for sure um, really again this is mainly just to show off that single damage um, uh, power that that she's got and that indra's got and uh yeah looks like we should be able to get another win out of this one here too um if you are wondering about the gems and this dungeon in particular i actually have a guide completely done uh for all of them um but i still need to like get in there like tag like each video i gotta you know put in the timeline um i actually made sure that i added some uh translations for it as well so I need to get in there and do it. All right, so, um, but anyways, if you are wondering about these du these dungeons, um, you don't need to do them. Here's the thing about the, the gems themselves. 
The immunity gem, which is exactly this one here, only gives you immunity for, I believe it's like, essentially one turn, um, but it, it lasts for three. You, you, it's, it's essentially one buff, but it only lasts for like one or two turns. And I think it lasts in three in Apophis. So it's not really very good. The, th the other thing is, is that if you get resist on this gem, it's really, it's, it's only going to be, it, it's useless in the first three turns. Once that uh, immunity buff goes away, then it's usable. But for the first three turns, if you have resistance, it's almost like you're losing stats there. So it's kind of like a give and a take. And to be honest with you, I'm like, I would prefer to just not even use that gem just because it's not good. So that, that's immunity in a nutshell for that gem set. I don't re recommend anybody to, to build or go for it. Um, one, it's 13 energy to do that dungeon. Two, again, really you're only going for that gem for like one or two turns, maybe for arena. Um, and once that buff goes away, you know, unless you're for sure positive your team is gonna kill the other team in one turn or two turns, that gem set to me is like useless um the other gem set from there is gem of protection or, or i forget what the actual name of, of it is but it reduces damage taken by 15 percent um it's good to a degree similar to the immunity spell or there's immunity gem in that it's good for about like i don't know maybe three or four turns in apophis but it's only for like your sword three once you've made a past apophis like level 80 um if you're using it on your on your astromon on your first sword it's a waste because the, fir the first sword in apophis he does not do that much damage like, there should be no reason why you can't live the first 20 turns in sword one in apophis um well i guess the only reason you did is if you don't have the mons for apophis but um but yeah so really that's that second gem set gem of protection or, or you know reduces damage let me go back into my storage because i do have some of those there um i i totally just completely did this run uh without indra and i realized that here at the end guys so just so you know so we will go back in here and we will add indra um we'll keep the persephone and maybe take out the fire truck and we'll bring in the dark indra there we go now we'll do one more out of the, this out of battle so i'll continue talking about that gem i guess while we're here uh you guys can kind of just see dark indra's damage uh, but that other gem set so gem of protection is just 50 15 percent flat damage reduction all around the uh immunity set is just immunity for like one turn technically the 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 text set for one turn but i think it's one buff and the buff lasts up to three turns um, and then the last set is the accuracy uh, gem set and the accuracy gem set really all it does is it improves your um, character's uh, ability to land a specific skill so like for example if you have an 80 percent chance to land zap it increases that by 20 percent so if your chance is 80 percent don't think oh it's 20 percent i'm gonna do uh, now i have a hundred percent chance to do sap no that's not the way that the math works um it would be an extra 20 percent of that 80. so it's a, a, a really it's a divisible slash multiplying factor of that um so in reality you're only getting maybe like 88 percent um of um a chance to sap uh, so again, really, like, if for somebody like the Water Wild thing, accuracy might be very, very good. Just to get, get that extra little bit of, like, chance to stun and uh, petrify. Uh, but in this generation of arenas where full buff break is a thing, where unwavering resolve is a thing, I would prefer to use a gem of healer set on somebody like the Wild thing. So again, really... I'm in the opinion that nobody really, really needs, and again, really needs to do the uh, dim dimensional golem dungeon. So I'll say that again. Nobody really needs to do that dungeon um, because there are better gem sets that are, you know, really good quality ascension skills that you can use in their place. 
and again, uh, very limited use for those jump sets. Uh, that's not to say that somebody out there who, you know, is a, uh, uh, I forget what the term is for, you know, a, a min-maxer. Uh, some people are min-maxers, meaning they want to get the maximum amount of stats and maximum amount of uh, use and application to you know, whatever gems or sets or skills are out there. It doesn't mean that I'm not saying, or I'm not saying that there's no, somebody out there that's not farming the heck out of those gems for a specific purpose. But that specific purpose may be very, very well focused and driven. Uh, so, you know, but for the average Monster Super League player, I say just avoid that dungeon. It's a waste of your energy. Um, you know, when you do complete it, you're probably going to get a five star gem anyways. And your chances are you're going to be getting flat recovery. <laughs> I hate to say it, but I, I, I think I spent at least like 600 or 700 runs on those dungeons just auto battle. Um, and I think I've, I probably will, again, will go back to my gem store to show you guys there, but, um, yeah. So Indra, 1.5 million damage, uh, auto battle this turn. Um, if you managed to see the last one, it was also 150 million. So a pretty consistent amount of damage for the dark Indra. All right. So we finished up. So I showed you guys the dimensional rift. And I should, I probably should have collected that one more turn before. I showed you guys the Light Dimension Golem. Uh, very, very easy. Again, really. <laughs> look at that energy cost, guys. 15 or 13. Also, if you don't know, uh, there are only specific um, gem typings or, or uh, gem uh, shapes available in these dungeons as well. So if I'm looking at the Light one here, you can only pick up the accuracy uh, square gem here, uh, the immunity diamond set, and the immunity square gem here, and then the gem of protection triangle piece here or shape here. So you kind of have to watch out for that. So like, if I wanted to find a uh, triangle uh, immunity gem, I'd have to do the width dimension. Um, if I wanted to find, you know, a triangle accuracy gem, I would have to do the water dimension. Um, or the dark dimension so that's kind of like how that works you have to just see what shape you're you're really trying to farm <laughs> again you don't need any of those gems i would recommend 90 percent of you guys actually farm the uh four star gems from slumbering city like i've said for months now that that gem set from slumbering city even a four star gem set from there is just it's so so good all right, let's go ahead and do uh, B12 because I love B12. Why not? And uh, we'll go. I think I could probably do it with uh, another Fire Draka um, and Persephone. Let's just go ahead and do that. And we'll do it on auto battle. I'm not sure if I'll survive, but may as well give it a try. I think in the past what I've done is I'll put in like three Fire Drakas and like uh, Fast maybe. Um, but I should be able to auto this, I, I think. I'm not entirely sure. Look at that. NPC RNG double stacking on my Indra there. But him being a boss, just taking it like a champ with that shield. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, as you guys can see, uh, Dragons B12, not a problem. And I will do Dragons B15 next. Uh, I'm not sure how much damage I'll deal on Dragon B15. Dragon B15 is like kind of hit or miss. I can't auto it still. Like I have a good auto team for it. Um, but I notice it's very inconsistent. So I just rather not waste my sigils by just doing it manually. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just do that manually next year. And what was your first? <laughs> just the, the, the gems you'd love to see. Those flat gems. Um, I don't know with the uh, the span of this game they should really just get rid of flat gem gems in general like they're just, they're so useless in my opinion uh, B10 is the light one so let's go ahead and do the light one I probably should have done it auto as well so let's go ahead and do it auto I mean does it really matter whether I do it auto from the front page or here not really but look at that Indra just one shotting the dark Persephone Again, just real good. Look at that shield just coming in handy right there. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I'll be able to one or two turn the light dragon. 
Um, the light dragon is, can actually be very, very annoying. And I think I might be hitting that 50% threshold here. If I hit this 50% threshold, um, I might be getting hit in the face. Oh, no, looks like you one shot at it. Never mind. So there you go. Auto dragons B10 in like 42 seconds. <laughs> and what do we get for... Oh, wow, look at that. A really nice gem. Except it doesn't belong to any single gem set. So I'll keep it for the kicks. Usually what I do is I'll save those for like those weekends where we get a uh, an event to get like 10 or 12 gems to level 12 like this weekend so all right here is dragons b15 um for this one i think i want to drop the fire traka and pick up uh somebody with um well i guess i could bring in dark wujin um because he's also got a little bit of uh, weaken and courageous strike and then I can use the purse for um, the wave clearing but I guess I don't really need the wave clearing if I'm gonna if I could use something like expose weakness um, let me try and see here um, I do have a stunner I could use the hunter I haven't done a, a video for hunter just yet um, I probably should do a video on Hunter because he's actually pretty good now. Um, he can help you guys deal with a fair decent amount of damage. Um, let's just go with this team. I guess Poseidon. Poseidon is another courageous striker. Well, he's not very well gemmed. Nah, let's just go ahead and go with this. I might die one or two tries. Who's, who knows? I'll see here. I'm not going to auto it. This isn't a auto showcase. Uh, but 284,000 on his first hit. 243 from the Wujin, as you guys can see, very OP mons. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I mean, here's the thing, guys. My RNG has been, like, really, really good in this game. Um, I know there's a lot of people out there that don't have an account like mine, that have been, like, playing the game for probably longer than I have. But the thing that I'll say is, is that I do a ton ton of summons when i first joined monster super league i did nothing but just grind astro gems like you wouldn't believe like uh, back when uh sliming was like unlimited my first like five months of monster super league all i did was farm um and, and farm astro gems like I, I i remember seeing like this one video with some guy using like a hundred thousand astro gems and pulling a dark Indra, and I was like, that's me. That's what I want. Oh, Conquering I demons is what I do. Oh, jeez. How do I end this? Oh, I forgot that they added this stupid ad thing. I can't. Uh, sorry, guys. I cannot get out of here. You knew there was going to be a day in which you will watch Odin drop a video where you're just watching an ad. And you, well, at the very minimum, you guys can hit skip. So please hit skip. I'll leave a timestamp there uh, for you guys to hit skip on this because yeah, that's annoying. Oh, that is so annoying. You could not skip it whatsoever. I forgot that they added that. Like, now you can just do uh, a free um, reset. What is that? Like two or three times a day now. Just watch an ad and you don't have to spend gems. Um, and I automatically press the middle of the screen. Oh, all right. And, of course, it's a resist gem. So trash. All right. But anyways, you guys can kind of see the damage power there of Indra. It looks like my battery is running low. That's all good. Um, but you guys can see his power there from all of those. Um, one last thing I guess that we could do um, is go back into Titans. So let's go ahead and go to Titan mode. And I'll probably like skip um, the... Um, yeah, let's do level 119. And let's do this. Uh, that's 175 million. And then I'll probably skip the front lane damage because I'm not going to make you guys sit here through that whole entire 25 minute um, spiel of of that front lane. So, because the front lane, you know, you're going to get blind. Uh, it's going to take forever for you to do damage. And it's just, it's annoying. So I'm just going to go ahead and skip it. That way we get to see just Indra's damage. 
Um, obviously, for the Light Titan, if you guys have watched my Light Titan guide, you're going to want, you know, blind up at all times. You're going to want attack down. You're going to want defense down. And you're most importantly going to want to have weaken. Um, if you're making it to, like, turn 10 and you don't have weaken, it's, like, almost like an instantaneous guaranteed way to die. So, um, but, yeah, look at that. Um. Uh, <clears throat> not critting plus attack down not good um but we're doing okay all right so um i guess another thing that i that i could talk about is the fact that um yeah i think latess is probably going to be releasing sometime in 2024 I'm obviously still checking the website like every other day uh, to see if there's any other updates or anything new coming out for you guys. Um, I do have a buddy of mine that lives in Korea that did hook me up uh, with uh, a mobile phone from Korea that has a SIM card from Korea. So at the very minimum, I should be able to plug that into an Android. Um, I bought a Poco phone. Poco phone is that what it's called? I don't even remember. Uh, that's like a, a worldwide phone um, and uh, it can connect to that sim card so i can basically play korean games on it so when mon super league does come out or latesia does come out i should be able to play it um, on that device um, so at the very minimum i'm prepared for it just in case they do drop it and they do make it available uh, here stateside um, but i don't think that it's going to be released probably until like 2024 at this point in time just because i have not seen um you know really too much more in-game depth detail there's really no in-game play yet uh there's very little footage uh you know just from the own smart study uh web page about what's available so the chances are that you know them releasing the game this year is probably uh, quite a bit away from that um but yeah um, okay, so, so far I'm getting, like, really unlucky. I notice I'm not getting, like, any exposed weakness. Um, and that's just the nature of RNG, guys. Like, sometimes you'll have really good RNG, sometimes you won't. Um, but you guys will see my damage here at the end. Um, Indra, like, if he's on triple attack, he's gonna do, like, 120 million. Um, if he's on attack, attack, crit damage, he's somewhere between 110 to 135, uh, granted your RNG, that, so that's why I use him on, on attack, attack, crit damage, is because sometimes you'll get, like, these really, really good runs in which you get really a good string of luck and you just deal, you know, that 135 million, 140 million. Um, and then there's other times where you just don't get that string of luck and, like, you know, even at 90% chance to crit rate, I still, like, manage to somehow um, die and, and, you know, get wiped out, like you know before his turn comes so all right we already lost our exposed weakness on the left so i'm not going to do a lot of damage on this one here um, but at the very minimum you guys can kind of see how much damage he he'll do and he should be able to do actually a lot more i think i just got a real bad rg um, and i'm not going to sit here and like you know go back and replay over and over and over again just so that i could have like one good hit um my max hit on the light titan right now is like 235 million um and that's with like a good rng on the front lane and good rng in the back lane um but yeah so all right i'm gonna go ahead and end this here since Indra's already dead and it doesn't matter i just wanted to see show you guys some of his damage he should be able to do like at least like you know hundred thousand yeah so ninety nine thousand there or 99 million i should say um, but he he can do a lot more than that. No, usually up to like it's like one forty. Um, if he had dev strikes though, if he had dev dev strikes, he would probably be sitting at two hundred mil. Uh, just because yeah, dev strike again really does have that much, uh, difference in in damage, um, if you use them correctly. So, all right. Um, so I think this video has gone on pretty pretty long. I think already as it is, um. I'm trying to think if there's anywhere else that I wanted to show him in. Um, let's see. We, we did the Colossus right off the beginning, luckily. We did the Dimensional Dungeon. We did the Dimensional uh, Rift. We did Titans. 
Uh, we did some arenas. Really, the only place we haven't really done is the, um, what do you call it here? Well, there's the hero dungeon, but that's like useless. The hero's dungeon is like stupid easy. Apex battles, eh, I don't know. Apex battles to me, they're kind of useless too. They're not really anything good. Um, I could bring him in there one time, but it's really not going to do anything. Apex battles, in my opinion, are still stupid easy. I clear them like one one time every single time. Um, we'll do like two more of these challenger runs. And then uh, we'll uh, go over one more time over his stats. Um, and then, uh, yeah, guys, I mean, my opinion on Dark Endra, again, he's my favorite Astromon in the game. Um, the day that I pulled him, I was, like, super thrilled. There's, like, a whole video of that uh, still recorded on YouTube that I'll probably watch when I'm, like, 60 years old. Like, I remember that time where I pulled a Dark Endra in Monster Super League. Or I may not even remember it. Who knows? But maybe by then there'll be some new virtual game that's just completely broken and much, much better, so... All right, so let's see if we can kill this Merlin. Uh, looks like Bast is going to give them a shield, but that's okay. I should be able to break it. And, uh, oh, that is a, that's bad juju right there. Bad, bad juju. Um, well, I don't want to... I'm going to go ahead and clear the Loki's um, burst there. Let's see. Oh, this is a tough one. Tough one, tough one. I might get... Um, I don't want to get stunned by this dark... Um, what's her name? Uh, succubus. It's been a long time since I've seen a succubus, actually. I might have to get stun locked here. Of course. Figures. Alright, looks like we're going to lose this stop bottle, battle. Uh, well, at least we. you guys see one where I lost... But look at Indra's damage, 419,000. And I probably should have taken off the shield there. It's all good. Let's go ahead and end it quick. And his team is just, like, so slow, too. That's the one thing. Like, you, you either encounter a team that's just really, really offensive-driven, and then you find a team that's just really, really stun-lock-driven like that one. But it is what it is. All right, so here we're going to do dark and let's take out the water fang and then oh he's got a dark hades look at that i love uh dark hades uh stun uh look there <laughs> just spinning his head around and around <laughs> like i said my super league man it's it's just really funny sometimes uh, i do enjoy this game quite a bit um, you know, obviously it's very heavy auto battle, uh, driven, uh, but it is super fun in my opinion. Now I don't want to kill the, the wood Poseidon just yet. Um, good. Let's do that. And then let's go ahead and kill him now. Let's do that. Let's do that. Perfect. And then let's get, oh, darn. I hate dark Yuki, man. Dark Yuki just, ugh. That zap just drives me nuts. Very annoying. And there is Light Indra giving us a little bit of work too. All right. Anyways, I think that's it for, for that. Um, let's do this uh, random one here. And just so you guys know, um, there is a little bit of a tip here. See where it says leader uh, and crit rate and crit down and all that? This is a bug that like has yet to be fixed. But when you select right underneath that character portrait, you can see who's in there. So it's I'm going to show you guys this. So uh, the front one is uh, Odin. She's got, uh, or no, uh, Hana, Light Hana. Uh, then we have SP Siphon and Attack Up. Who has SP Siphon and Attack Up? And this light. Um, I can't remember who that is. Uh, this one is Fearless Taunt and Aggression Defense. That looks like uh, light. Um, not like Yoki. Or Loki. Uh, that's definitely Dark Griffin. I don't remember these two. Ugh, bad combination skills. Firevic? Yeah, that's definitely Firevic. Um Looks like on the second row we have a Dark Merlin and a Dark Yuki and a Light Verdi and uh, 
but then I click on the right one. Uh, HP aggression and shield. I can't remember. Oh, that's a light uh, or a dark. Um, what's his name? Cupid. All right, so let's see who is up top here in this front row. Let's see if it's anybody we know. Ah, that's who it was. SP7 attack up is the uh, Paracelsius or uh, Hohenheim. All right, so it looks like it was... I mean, you guys can see it there. You know, that's a clear bug, and that's been in the game for pff, pretty much the first week that uh, the... Uh, the Champions League has been out, and they've just like you know. I don't think they've just forgotten to fix it. I think they just they, they don't have a fix for it, and so that's why it's still there. <laughs> it's like yeah, let's go ahead and tell people it's fixed, but let's just leave it in there and hope nobody sees that that has yet to be fixed. And and in my opinion, that's a pretty busted bug that needs to be fixed like ASAP. But I think the problem is is that the, the way that Monster Super is made, Monster Super League is made, is that it's in a, a layer tier format. Uh, so, you know, when you're tiering like that and, you know, building on top of itself um, becomes very, very difficult to hide some of those um, underneath uh, design flaws. So, um, but yeah, so it, again, really, if you wanted to take the peek another, another peek at that, you know, let me go ahead and refresh. Oh, I can't refresh another 10 more minutes and I think the game's gone on for like an hour long now so i think i'm gonna go ahead and end it here um but yeah guys really overall intro opinions uh definitely the most broken mon in the game um i he's just so good in so many places uh very good character uh in general aesthetic wise and definitely there he's a good mon uh damage wise he's there he's a really good mon um so yeah i i give indra a 10 out of 10 he's just so good um and i will do a, an astromon tier list next week uh, so i'll get that ready for you guys um but um, my personal opinion dark indra is the best astromon in the game uh second runner for second right now is dark persephone in my opinion just because she's so so good um and i'll wait to give you guys my third one uh when i uh, do that um, ranking video um, or tier list so um, anyways guys that's it for this video i'll catch you all on the next one take it easy guys